Hi, welcome to the pregnancy preview class. My name is Carol and I'm going to be going through this booklet with you over the computer for the next 30 minutes or so. The pregnancy preview class is based on an, a handout that you'll get at your first pregnancy visit called the pregnancy planner. This booklet has all sorts of good information in it and we're just going to go through it in detail today. And then when you go to see the doctor for the first time, you'll get the actual pregnancy planner. We want you to keep that around and refer to it often throughout your pregnancy. Congratulations on your pregnancy. The caregivers at Enloe Nettleton Mother and Baby Care Center are excited to guide you and your loved ones through this special journey. This booklet is gonna be used to help you learn what to expect during your prenatal visits, what medications are safe to take, foods to avoid during your pregnancy, how to find comfort for common pregnancy issues, warning signs to watch for, how to cope with stress, how to prepare for your hospital stay, and what to expect after you deliver. Prenatal visits are gonna become a very important part of your life, and during your pregnancy, you'll see your obstetric provider or midwife regularly every four weeks until your 28th week of pregnancy, every two weeks after that until your 36th week of pregnancy, and then every week after that until you deliver. Enlo is providing both traditional and group prenatal care. Your first prenatal visit may last about 30 minutes. Your partner is encouraged to attend. Office visits are a great time to ask any questions, so write down the questions you have and take them with you when you go see your provider. One thing you'll want to do soon is review your insurance. Healthcare during your pregnancy become, can become expensive. So prevent financial surprises by reviewing your health insurance, what is covered during your pregnancy, and if your provider and ENLO accept your insurance. If you have any questions, you can always call the ENLO's patient financial services at the number on your screen. You're gonna be going through many tests during your pregnancy, starting with some blood tests. When you're first pregnant and you go see your provider, they're gonna order something called a prenatal screen. This allows them to find out your blood type, your RH compatibility type. They'll check you for anemia. They check everybody for sexually transmitted diseases. And they look to see if you have um, up to date on your rubella vaccine, as well as other things. They'll also test everybody for HIV, if you have cons given consent for that. They'll do urine tests every time you go to the doctor and they're just mainly looking for protein, which is a symptom of, of a issue that we'll talk about later. As far as ultrasound goes, you'll have an ultrasound. Some of you will have it at your first visit, others a little bit later. Usually by 19 or 20 weeks, you've had your first ultrasound. And then they only order them after that if it's needed to check on the baby or the placenta or anything like that. Another blood exam that you can have that I didn't mention is, is prenatal genetic screening. And that can be done pretty early in pregnancy where you can actually find out the gender of your baby. GBS testing stands for group beta strep. And that's something we test all women for around 36 weeks of pregnancy. Group beta strep is a bacteria that a lot of women carry, but it's not harmful to you or your partner, but it can be harmful to the baby if the baby gets it when it's born. So we test every woman for it. And if you test positive, we just give you uh, antibiotics in labor. Other testing you might have done is when you're about 28 weeks, we'll test you for gestational diabetes as well as anemia. This is probably the most common question that we get asked as healthcare providers with pregnant women, what medications are safe to take during pregnancy? The next few slides are gonna list some of those medications. And I want you to keep these, this pregnancy planner handy during your pregnancy so that you can go, refer to it when you wanna know what medications are safe. Just remember to let all the members of your care team, including your dentist, know you're pregnant and only take medications your team advises. Some medications can be dangerous. You don't want to take Motrin or ibuprofen, Aleve or aspirin unless directed by your healthcare provider. If you suffer from any of the following conditions during pregnancy, the medications listed are usually safe. However, you always want to check with your provider to be certain. I'm not going to go over every medication individually, but just know that we have medications listed here that will help you with allergies, cold and flu, constipation, diarrhea, minor skin wounds, headache, heartburn, hemorrhoids, insect bites, nausea and vomiting, rashes, trouble sleeping, and yeast infections. 
Most of these medications can be obtained over the counter. And again, you just want to check with your provider, but these are all safe and, it, and it's okay to take them. Obviously, we'd like you to avoid alcohol, tobacco, and street drugs, drugs during your pregnancy. Smoking, drinking alcohol, and taking drugs during your pregnancy can cause many problems, including premature birth, birth defects, and even infant death. If you need help quitting, talk to your provider. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration also offers an online treatment facility locator at, at findtreatment.samhsa.gov. You can also get two free phone-based smoking cessation programs by calling the numbers on your screen. It's very important to take prenatal vitamins. Hopefully you're already doing that if you're eight or nine weeks pregnant. Be sure to take an over-the-counter prenatal vitamin every day. You want to take one that contains folic acid, which we'll talk more about in a minute. Any brand is fine, but it's best to take the vitamin with plenty of water and food. If your prenatal vitamin makes you nauseous or constipated, please talk to your care team. Eating more folic acid before and during your pregnancy can reduce your baby's risk of brain and spinal cord defects. Babies whose moms have a family history of these defects, have diabetes, or are taking anti-seizure medication are most at risk. Have 600 micrograms of folic acid through your 12th week of pregnancy. That's the most crucial time for your baby's brain and spinal cord development. You will want to continue to take your prenatal vitamin all the way through your pregnancy and as long as you're breastfeeding. There are many foods that are high in folic acid. I'm not going to list them all, but you can see them here on your screen. So try to include these in your diet. There are foods that you should avoid during pregnancy. Again, I'm not going to read them all, but some of the highlights are to only eat pasteurized cheese. If you're going to opt for fish, make sure it's one with less mercury. You want to avoid certain fish such as tile fish, ahi tuna, sea bass, shark, swordfish. If you want to eat white tuna, that's okay, but limit yourself to six ounces a week. Avoid eating any uncooked fish such as sushi because it can contain parasites and bacteria. If you eat eggs, you want them to be cooked thoroughly until the yolks and whites are firm and avoid eating, eating any foods that have raw or slightly cooked eggs in them. Commercial mayonnaise dressings and sauces that contain pasteurized eggs are safe. Anytime you see a QR code on the slides here or in your pregnancy planner, you can scan it with your phone and it'll give you more information on that subject. You wanna maintain a healthy weight while you're pregnant. So eat a nutritious diet, drink plenty of water and have, try to eat from the five food groups, including fruits, vegetables, proteins, and grains. Limit your foods that are high in fat and keep in mind you only need 300 more calories a day when you're pregnant. The website choosemyplate.gov will give you lots of ideas for healthy eating. People who are overweight or obese have a higher risk of complications during pregnancy heart disease, type two diabetes, and certain cancers. People who are underweight may also be at risk for serious health problems. If you are overweight, obese, or underweight, talk to your provider about maintaining a healthy weight during your pregnancy. You wanna be mindful of something called toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis is a parasite that can damage your baby's brain and eyes. It's found in raw food, soil, and some animals, including cats. To protect yourself, Wash your hands with soap and warm water after touching soil, raw meat, and unwashed fruits and vegetables. Wash fruits and vegetables before eating them. Cook all meat thoroughly. The internal temperature should reach 160 degrees. Separate raw meat from other foods in your grocery cart and refrigerator. Wash all cutting boards and knives thoroughly with soap and hot water. And have someone else clean your cat litter box. If you have to do it yourself, place a mask over your nose and mouth wear gloves and wash your hands thoroughly afterwards. Caffeine is okay to have during pregnancy, but you should limit it and try to modify your intake. There's no clear consensus on how much is safe during pregnancy, so it's best to stay away from it as much as possible, especially during your first trimester. Remember that caffeine is in more than your morning cup of coffee. It's also in soda, tea, energy drinks, and certain pain medications. If you're unsure how much you can consume, start reading labels and keep track. It's very important to get your vaccinations when you're pregnant, especially for the flu and whooping cough. The flu can cause low birth weight, premature birth, stillbirth, or hospitalization. Whooping cough can cause coughing fits in your baby, leaving him or her gasping for air and lead to serious lung infections and even hospitalization. 
That's why you should get your flu vaccine as soon as possible during flu season and a whooping cough vaccine in your third trimester of pregnancy. The protection you get from these vaccines can be passed on to your baby. And now with COVID out, the COVID vaccine is recommended by the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology during pregnancy and lactation. Please discuss if vaccination is right for you with your provider. Exercise is important to continue during your pregnancy. We want you to be in good physical condition. It can make for an easier labor and healthier baby. So keep moving. Try to exercise at least three times a week. Brisk walking, swimming, stationary biking, rowing, ski machines are all good ways to do that unless your provider says otherwise. While exercising, prevent heat loss by remaining hydrated and dressing appropriately. Avoid scuba diving, water skiing, and contact sports, as well as activities that may result in blows to your abdomen. It's best not to push your heart rate above 140 minutes, 140 beats per minute, and do not do and do continued aerobic exercise for longer than 30 minutes. Lifting weights for maintenance of strength can be cautiously continued, but heavy weight lifting should be avoided. To help with back pain, you can, should avoid lifting heavy objects, sleep on a firm flat mattress, wear low heeled shoes, get a massage from a certified therapist, and try head rolling or shoulder rotating for pain in the upper back. To help with muscle cramps, eat foods high in calcium. When you lie down, do so on your left side and try a gentle massage or hot water bottle. It's okay to lay on your right side when you're sleeping. This is just talking about when you have leg cramps. To help with breast tenderness, wear a supportive bra during the day and a sleep bra at night. Use cotton bras because they allow your skin to breathe and take warm but not hot showers. Remember, heat can be dangerous for your baby. Morning sickness and fatigue are something you might be experiencing already. Morning, morning sickness tends to go away after 12 weeks, but the fatigue can last throughout your pregnancy. To help with nausea, drink ginger ale or decaffeinated tea, eat frequent small meals and have an early morning snack. Try gelatin flavored popsicles or chicken broth, have a protein snack and take one minute or take one of the medications noted on page five of your pregnancy planner. If your nausea is severe, call your provider. And by severe, we mean you're not able to keep liquids or food down. To help with fatigue, get plenty of rest, avoid eating before bedtime, take warm baths before bed, Use relaxation techniques, make sure your bed is comfortable, continue doing light daily exercise and eat a healthy diet. You might experience frequent urination or vaginal discharge. To help with frequent urination, drink less before bedtime to avoid disrupting your sleep. Go to the bathroom when you feel the urge, do not wait. Call your provider if you have any symptoms of a bladder infection such as pain, burning or irritation when you urinate with or without a fever. To help with vaginal discharge, Wash your gentle, genital area, sorry about that, area daily with mild soap and rinse well. Wear cotton underwear, avoid tight pantyhose or pants. Don't use tampons or douching while pregnant and call your provider if you notice a discharge that's bloody, yellow or greenish or foul smelling. You might experience some digestive discomforts like constipation, gas or heartburn during pregnancy. For constipation, drink more fluids, eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, exercise, and go to the bathroom as soon as you feel the urge. Avoid large, high-fat meals, chew your food thoroughly, avoid mineral oil, and if you think you need a laxative, refer back to page five of your pregnancy planner. To help with heartburn, avoid large, spicy foods, drink plenty of liquid with your meals, chew your food thoroughly, stay upright for an hour after eating, elevate the head of your bed when you lie down, and keep good posture. You may have contractions as early as your fourth month of pregnancy. However, most women don't notice them until their seventh or eighth month. To help with contractions or cramping, try sitting and resting, empty your bladder, lie down on your left side, and drink plenty of water. Call your provider if you have contractions that are severe and occur more than six times in less than an hour and are not going away. About 90% of pregnant women notice a darkening in the areola around their nipple, and many women get a dark line called a linea nigra down their abdomen. You don't need to treat these. They usually disappear after you have the baby. However, if you notice oily skin, stretch marks, or hemorrhoids, you can take steps to relieve them. For oily skin, wash your skin with often using a gentle soap and plenty of water. Use oil-free makeup to decrease the chances of acne. To help with stretch marks, ensure you're eating a nutritious diet Drink lots of water, 
apply, moist, apply moisturizing cream to areas that itch due to your stretching skin. And to help with hemorrhoids, soak in a warm bath, use ice packs or an anesthetic ointment. Excuse me, drinking water, I need to do that. Okay, we're ready to continue. Pregnancy can cause swelling in your feet, ankles, and in the veins of your thighs, calves, and even in the vaginal area. To help with swelling in your feet or ankles, drink plenty of water, eat less salt and more protein, rest with your legs elevated, wear support stockings, and avoid sitting with your feet on the floor for long periods of time or sitting with your legs crossed. To help with varicose veins, avoid wearing tight clothes, do not stand for long periods of time, avoid crossing your legs when you sit, and exercise regularly. Breathing issues can be an issue as you get further into your pregnancy. As your baby gets bigger, it's common to experience shortness of breath. To make breathing easier, stand or sit erect, keep your shoulders back, try and breathe at a normal rate and move slower, hold your arms over your head to expand your rib cage, and use pillows to prop you up when you sleep. There are some warning signs that we want you to keep track of, mostly going to happen later in your pregnancy, but early labor and preeclampsia can be a dan danger for you and your baby. Here's what you need to know. A normal pregnancy lasts 40 weeks. However, you can go into labor sooner than the 37th week of your pregnancy. This is called premature labor. If you notice any of the following signs, you want to call your provider right away or go to labor and delivery for evaluation. Your uterus tightens more than six times in an hour or more often than every 10 minutes. If you have lower back pain or if you feel pain or dull pressure that comes and goes regularly. If your lower abdomen hurts and you feel pain or pressure in your thighs or around your vagina. If you have stomach aches or cramps or diarrhea, if you see a change in your vaginal discharge, all those can be signs of preterm labor and you want to get checked out. Preeclampsia is a serious condition related to high blood pressure. It can appear during the second half of pregnancy and up to six weeks after delivery. For women, this condition can lead to seizures, strokes, organ damage, or death. For babies, it can mean early birth or death. If you notice any of these signs of preeclampsia, call your provider or go to labor and delivery right away. A severe stomach pain in the right side of your tummy, swelling in your hands and face, severe swelling in your legs, severe vomiting or nausea, excessive dizziness, gaining more than five pounds in one week, severe headaches that don't go away with Tylenol, seeing spots or flashes of light, having blurred or dimmed vision. Some other concerns you might want to look out for and notify your provider for are if you fall, if you're involved in a car accident, or if you have any of the following symptoms, any amount of bleeding from your vagina, rectum, nipples, or lungs, an absence of or decrease in your baby's movement, a sudden gush of fluid from your vagina, frequent uterine contractions, chills or fever over 100.4 degrees, sharp pain or a burning feeling when you urinate, shortness of breath, chest pain or fast beating heart or overwhelming tiredness. Stress can be a big problem during pregnancy. It's a huge change in your life. Depression and anxiety are common. So we want you to know that there are resources for you to help with that. Be mindful during your pregnancy and watch for feelings of anxiety, low energy levels, little interest in activities you used to enjoy, changes in your eating habits, irritability or moodiness, trouble concentrating, or thoughts of hurting yourself. Some of these symptoms sound like pregnancy, but others are more concerning. If you notice these signs, talk to your provider, attend a support group, or see a therapist. Get plenty of rest and don't give up until you get the help you need. Help is available. There's a pregnancy and postpartum support group that Enlo, Enlo supports. They meet once a week and get together. It's for women who are pregnant or recently gave birth. You can scan the QR code to find out more information. There's also a lot of resources online and we have phone numbers here for you if you need any more help. Here's some more resources. The next few slides are gonna talk about preparing for your delivery and what's gonna happen at the hospital. So I'm gonna kind of just skim over them because that's a long way away for most of you. But I want you to know if you haven't seen the birthing unit at Enlo, or if you haven't had a tour, which they don't do in-person tours anymore, you can scan the QR code here and you can go and see a tour either in English or Spanish. You can also register online on the, on, at this website, but you don't need to if you're already seeing a provider through Enlo Women's Services. 
pretty soon you're going to want to start thinking about a pediatrician. The best way to do that is through word of mouth by your friends or look it up online, which there will be a, a link right here at www.enlo.org slash doctor, where you can find the pediatricians listed to help you make a choice. It's always good around your second trimester to start calling and see who's taking new patients. You're going to want to take a childbirth course if this is your first baby. So around your second trimester, you can start looking into that. Here's the link for the Enlo classes that we offer. And there are other courses out there in the community as well. A birth plan is always a good idea to start thinking about your labor and how you want your delivery to be. It does not have to be in writing, but just kind of have an idea in your head so when you go to the hospital, you can tell your nurse what you want. This are some more places that you can learn about other ENLO services. We have a mother and baby education center. They offer classes in parenting, newborn care, and infant safety. And there's also a breastfeeding supply store with lactation help. If you are diabetic prior to being pregnant, or if you've developed gestational diabetes, we're gonna hook you up with our Sweet Success program. You'll be in contact with a certified diabetes educator, and they will help you throughout your pregnancy to manage your blood sugars, diet, um, your exercise program, and even medication if you need it. ENLO is a baby-friendly hospital. This means our caregivers provide families with the skills they need for the best feeding and bonding results. Breast milk is the best food for your baby. That's why our goal is to help you breastfeed exclusively for at least six months. Our nurses have specialized training and are ready to help you breastfeed during your stay at ENLO and once you go home. In fact, mother, the Mother Baby Center has certified lactation consultants on hand to help with any consultations you might need. Some of the benefits of breastfeeding are the baby will have more protection against asthma and eczema. The baby's less likely to get sick from viruses and bacteria. The baby's at a lower risk for allergies and ear infections, and some breastfed babies even have higher IQ and vision scores. These babies also have a lower risk of sudden infant death syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, some forms of cancer, diabetes, obesity, and cavities. Breastfeeding is also good for moms because it can lower your risk of anemia, some cancers, osteoporosis, postpartum bleeding, type two diabetes, and it helps you return to your pre-pregnant weight. It's also good for society because it will reduce the number of sick days that families have to use to care for their sick children. It requires no packaging, so it's environmentally friendly and it's free. If you have any questions, you can call the number on your screen. Here's a few sources also for breastfeeding that will be listed in your pregnancy planner. I'm not gonna go into detail about car seat safety, but just know that you're gonna to wanna to have a car seat by about your third trimester, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's um, installed correctly. The nurses at the hospital can't help you put your car seat together and we can't help you install it in your car. So you'll wanna know how to do that before you get there. If you need help purchasing a car seat or a booster, there's a, a website on the screen that you can refer to. And these are some resources that you can call when you're ready to install your car seat. Cord blood banking is something some people do if they want to save their, their baby's umbilical cord blood. It's a painless procedure. They collect it after the baby's born. And if you're interested in that, you can look up this website and find out more information as well. I'm not going to go into detail about what to pack for the hospital because that's a long way away, but it's listed in your pregnancy planner when that time comes up. Same with arriving at the hospital. But if you do wanna know what the visitation policy is, you can go to this website on your screen and find out what the current visitation policy is. It does change frequently these days. You're gonna have a nurse who'll support you during labor as well as the support person of your choice. And they're gonna to talk to you about how to get through labor when you're at that point. Birth affirmations are very powerful and there's a list of them in your pregnancy planner. Just things to start reminding yourself of as you get closer to delivery to help you have the best experience you can. We do offer labor without medication at Enlo and we encourage that if that's your decision. We have aromatherapy, relaxation, guided imagery, position changes, massage, breathing techniques, and even whirlpool tubs and showers to offer you. Sometimes when you're going into labor, you have to be induced or augmented. And these are the medications that we use for that, just so you can look them up and do research on that. There's also pain medications listed here if you want to know more about that. And these are all in your pregnancy planner. These are additional medications that we might use to help with pain. And these are some medications you might get after delivery. 
Safety is a top priority at Enlo, and once your baby's born, a nurse will place matching bands on you, your baby, and your labor partner. If you're separated for any reason, the nurses will match these ID IDs when the two of you are reunited. If you have any questions about anybody who's in your room or enters your room while you're there, please press your call button and you will, a nurse will come to your help. Skin to skin is a baby friendly term that you're going to hear a lot during your pregnancy and after you have the baby. After labor, a caregiver will place your baby on your chest for skin to skin contact. This helps your baby transition to the outside world, start breastfeeding in the first hour, regulates the temperature and blood sugar of your baby and helps the baby to be calm and comforted. We highly recommend lots of skin to skin. Rooming in just means that your baby stays in the room with you, but in a separate crib. This is called rooming in, and it's important because it helps you learn your baby's feeding cues, feed your newborn on demand, learn how to care for your infant, and it helps your baby recognize you. Your baby's gonna undergo some tests in the first 24 to 48 hours of life. One of those is a test for congenital heart disease. And just know that it's an easy test. They just put a little monitor on your baby's wrist and foot, and they watch the pulse oxygen levels to see how your baby's doing. If there's any issue, then they can look into it further. There's a genetic and metabolic disorder test that they'll have called the newborn screen. And it basically, they do a, a little pinprick on your baby's heel, collect some blood and send it to a lab. California law requires the babies to have this test, but you can refuse it. It's, op it's optional for you if you choose to. A hearing test will be done on all babies if you consent to that. And they just bring a machine into your room and put little earphones on the baby and test their hearing. Vitamin K and um, urethromycin are also medications that are given to the baby in the first two hours of life. We need vitamin K so our blood will clot normally. When babies are born, they're born with very small amounts in their system. So we offer a single vitamin K injection and it's recommended. It's given in the muscle of your baby's leg right after birth within the first hour or two. Protects your baby from developing dangerous bleeding problems. State law requires that your baby receives an antibiotic in his or her eyes shortly after birth to prevent blindness, which can happen if neonatal ophthalmia is untreated. Of course, it's, it's um, with your consent and your care team will just talk to you about that as well. If you have a boy, you might be considering circumcision. So here, there's information in the pregnancy planner about that. It's usually done at the hospital, but it can be done in the doctor's office as well. Your baby will receive a birth certificate and social security number while they're in the hospital. The actual social security card will come to you six weeks after delivery and the birth certificate, you'll fill out the information, they send it to the county for recording and then you can get an actual copy of that from Oroville. When you get ready to leave the hospital, they're gonna give you a going home booklet that is just like your pregnancy planner, but now it talks about how to care for your baby afterwards and how to pump and, breast, and store breast milk if that's your choice. This is a picture of a baby doing safe sleep. We wanna encourage you to sleep the baby only on their back. SIDS is sudden de death of an infant younger than six months and researchers don't know what causes it, but we do know that safe sleeping on their back can help prevent it. This is what a safe sleep environment looks like. Just a baby on a crib, nothing in the crib, no bumpers, no toys, no blankets, that's safe sleep. The last, part of your pregnancy planner is going to be a little flyer that shows urgent maternal warning signs. These are just quick reminders of things that you want to contact your provider for or go into the hospital for. I want to thank you for joining me for the pregnancy preview class. Best wishes for a healthy pregnancy as you prepare, prepare for delivery and parenting. Thank you so much.